All right, so hi guys. It is Artmas Day. I don't remember because I'm filling these in advance. It'll have it on the title, but that's what you get when you, you know, you work a lot in advance and you have to move things around because uh, life likes to throw many aggressive host, uh, hostile, hostile lemons at you. Anyway, hot topic issue. Uh, uh, this is an issue that I've been seeing more and more and more, and I feel like it's only going to get worse. So let's talk about ageism in the art community. I know it's a hot, spicy, angry topic. Now, before I get into the topic, hi, I'm doing the 12 Days of Art Mish. That is a new art topic, art rambles, story time challenge, speed paint for the 12 days leading up to Christmas of 2020 because this year is a dumpster fire. And I want to do my part on my platform to try to bring some joy and comedy and escapism to people out there who need it most, like me. I'm, I'm also like you people. We, oh, I can't wait for this year to be over. Anyway, all of my social media links are in my link tree link down below if you want to follow me there. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe because the YouTube algorithmic bot is stupid and the feed the bot comments have been helping so, so, so much. So yeah, there's the basic shell. Let's talk about ageism. All right, so, so, <laughs> I am seeing this more and more and more and it is getting so aggravating because... I am 28 years old. In retrospect, I am not that old. I know I make jokes about being an old lady and doing all this here and there, but a lot of people do not realize how drastic the art community has grown since I, I was in high school. I was a middle schooler. And how different things have become. And the issue here is there are a lot of younger artists that are really making it hard for older artists to feel confident in their work. I'm not even going to say get their foot in the door because they're not. In my generational time, you know, I'm a millennial. I know it's all the memes coming out, but I'm serious here. We came from a time where if you had supportive parents in your art career or supportive family in general, that was such a rare commodity. I was one of the very few lucky kids in my entire school for the most part when I went through almost all of my schooling that had parents that were confident and helped nurture my growth as an artist. Even then, I'm not even comfortable with my stuff until the past couple years where I'm like, mm, yep, you know what? That's good stuff. Could be better. I'm always up for critiques as long as they are critiques and not people being rude or stupid in the guise of being critiques. And why do I say that? And that's because, so when I grew up, all right, we had Photoshop. I think uh, GIMP had like just come out. Psy 1 and MS Paint. Many people of my generation grew up on OG MS Paint. That was when it was just pixels, nothing else. There were a lot of cheat sheets and videos on how to do it back in the day. You know, before they implemented things like text and layers and line art and different types of styles there. And so it was a very different time. Same for art communities in general. They were vastly, vastly different. We had Photo Bucket and MySpace, and as a kid, that was kind of it. And even though that was in middle school, that wasn't growing up with it. You know, we didn't grow up with computers like people do now, we, with like kids do now, with the resources that younger kids have now. A big reason why tracing is still a rampant issue. It's, it's not gone away, but it is so, so, so little compared to how it was when I was a kid. To the point where when I was a kid, I didn't think tracing was bad. I didn't think there was anything wrong with, like I've said, I've openly admitted back when I was a youngin, I would go into MS Paint and I would edit Naruto screenshots and Naruto fan arts I would find on Google. And I would do speed paints for them back on YouTube when that was the thing, you know? Because that was what I saw as normal. Me as an adult now, yeah, it's not normal. You're seeing kids with speed paints, with things like that. Another huge difference with the ageism here is how cheap resources have become compared to how they were when I was a kid. I, I, I've talked about this in much older videos, but um, back when I had Copics, I, I sold all of my Copics a couple of years ago. I literally only have a few grays. 
uh, because I still use those. But back when I was a kid, it was MS Paint and a mouse, unless you were lucky, or you had a Wacom knockoff. And back in the day, the Wacom knockoffs were not great. Okay, they were not. They were so bad. And so Wacoms were expensive. Kids were excited if they got a Wacom bamboo. Now, back in those days, do you want to know how much a Wacom bamboo was? It was $100. It was $100 for a, like, not even 6 by 6 drawing screen surface. Forget having a face tablet. Those were easily $1,000 if you could get one. I remember when I was in middle school, and I've openly talked about this, and it also talks about not understanding your resources for the time. When I was in middle school, later middle school, I was doing more stuff online. Again, MS Paint edits of Naruto stuff. But my dad, for a Christmas gift, and it was my only Christmas gift that year, he bought me a Wacom Intuos Pro 3. And it was the year the 3 came out, and it was a large one. Now, I didn't know what it was. I didn't know how to use it properly. I did not take good care of it. I did not realize how expensive that was either. And that's because I was a kid and they weren't really talked about. It's the same thing as if if you had a Cintiq back in the day. A Cintiq is still pretty expensive now, but they didn't have good alternatives like they do now. And this isn't sponsored or where I'm going to shill a thing here, but I have done reviews for Gaumon, for Huion, uh, I haven't done one for X-Pen, but I know my friends have X-Pens and they swear by it. There are really nice alternatives to face tablets that people can use. Computers are cheaper. I know it might not sound like it, but computers now are drastically cheaper too. Same with laptops and tablets compared to how they once were. Now, obviously, if you want a professional grade one, you're probably still going to spend anywhere between, you know, $800 to $1,000, but that's professional grade. Starting off now, it's very different. And I'm going to go back to the Copic thing for a minute. When I was a kid in high school, okay, because I'm sorry, high schoolers out there, your kids, especially when you get older, you're going to see that your kids. A single Copic was anywhere between three to five dollars, and it was still expensive. Our only options back in the day where, at least in America, I know in uh, Europe they had other ones too, but it was Copic, or Copic, however you say it, I always called them Copics, and Prismacolor markers. But everyone wanted those Copics because you could refill the marker. With Prismacolor, back in the day, you had to buy them in a set. You couldn't buy them separately unless you were lucky and your hobby store was able to do that. Again, this is before Amazon got big, we're selling stuff and online retailing. It was what you could get in your retail store and what you can get in your craft store. Micron pens have always been around, so that's one of those things that's never really changed. But when it came to Copics, I was really into art at the time and I was taking my art classes, but I didn't really like digital art that much because I didn't know how to use my tablet that well. And again, the only decent programs were Photoshop, which especially Photoshop back in 2008, <laughs> Not that great. Um, or Psy. And that's why a lot of people use Psy because Psy was one of the cheaper, more uh, comfortable programs that had a stabilizer attached to it. I know um, for people who aren't artists, a stabilizer is a, pro is a uh, code in a program that allows it so we can have, uh, it can help stabilize our line work, you know, and help you work with things. Now that I've had my iPad Pro, the stabilizer is vastly different from what I was used to, but now I personally love my inking so much more. And because of my iPad Pro, I know I made a video earlier this year, like knocking on it. I'm Trust me, that's going to be a video coming out later in Artmist that I'm, I'm, because I am a woman of my word. And if I feel like items have changed on points of view that I've talked about, I'm going to talk about it. So anyway, it's gotten me to be so much more confident in my lines in the, this is now the first full year I've had my, my iPad Pro. And I felt like my line work has improved so much and so much faster in the one year I've had my iPad Pro than doing all the years I did inside because I relied on the stabilizer so much. And so this is another thing I'm talking about. You know, we have readily available free resources. I know that might knock a thing for Skillshare in a few years if I ever get one, but 
you can find almost any tutorial, anything you want online for free, whether it be Twitter, Instagram, or YouTube, or even TikTok. Yes, I have a TikTok now. I'm still an old lady trying to learn how to use the app, but if you find me on it, it that is me. But there are so many different things now. Like I said, with the Copics, for a 72-pack of markers, it was my only Christmas and birthday gift that entire year because that was like $300, and that was a big gift. It was a big gift, but I loved it, and those markers lasted me throughout most of high school where the most I would do is if I was at an anime convention because it's another thing. I know it's you know pre-2020. We didn't have as many anime conventions as we did now. We didn't have any as many nerd conventions. Again, pre-2020. Um, so your only options were if you did cons, you could get discounts at cons, but how many people could do that to get art supplies readily available? You know what I mean? And so, but now we have better alternatives than Copics price-wise for artists who are learning. Again, the only other option was Prismacolor and Prismacolor was still pretty pricey, but now we have a hoo Arteza, uh, I think Touch Nuo, Windsor, well, Windsor Newton's more higher end, but the same thing goes for watercolors. The same thing goes for so many things. There are so many wonderful opportunities now where parents or people who support young, you know, um, like guardians and stuff, they can put more effort into supporting the arts without them breaking the bank. You know, you're finding kids now where, you know, if a kid's got a really big passion for art, they can get a decent iPad Pro a few generations old for anywhere between two to three, 200 to 500 bucks. That's still very expensive, but in the long run, that is a device that can last the kid years while they learn from it. They can, you know, see resources. They can advance. They can practice more. They can be more, you know, inviting. When I was a kid... I cannot tell you how many of my friends' merit parents, I don't know why I said merits, parents, would talk down to me because I would draw. To the point where it wasn't until I was in my like third year of college when I dropped out that I was like, hey, I, you know, maybe I can't do this art thing. And I've been doing it full time ever since. And it's because of people being like, it's not a real job. Now, there are still people like that that exist now, but it is vastly more accommodating and more welcoming than it was when I was that age, okay? And the problem is you have older people my age or in their 20s who, you know, they didn't get to start drawing and be, you know, uh, have that confidence and resources at 10 to 12. So you see adults with art styles that aren't as advanced. And that's something that I'm trying to get better at myself too, is just assuming if I see artwork that's not on the same level as myself or stuff that I'm used to, I need to stop being like, that's a kid. Because it might not be a kid. It might be someone learning because art is a skill and a practice. No one's no one comes out the womb just knowing how to draw. Nobody does. And there's so many different art styles and um, different little subsects of the art community you can be a part of. There's the fine artists, there's the cartoonists, there's the comic books, there's the inkers, there's the traditional only, there's the digital only, there's the I like painting stuff, there's the I like gouache, I like watercolor, I like nah, 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 nah. I like arts and crafts, I like multiple things. We all have subsects for this and we're all taking it in. But the second you, you see these little brats online who, their artwork is good. Their artwork is good, but they've got an ego about it. Where they're like, I was drawing like that back when I was 13. Cool little Timmy that you could do that when you were 13. When I was 13, my entire family had to share internet. And if somebody used a phone too long, we couldn't go online. Back when I was 13, we had a family computer. <laughs> where everybody had to share a computer. <laughs> you know? Um... That's stuff that happens and how different things are now to how it used to be, you know? Now you can get really nice graphic tablets that don't take up a lot of RAM and a lot of issue and a lot of space for a decent price for people to practice with. You have multiple free programs, multiple free programs and resources readily available. You have so many alternatives to markers, to ink work, to techniques, to helping people save money, to helping kids learn, to helping kids practice. And then you see these people dog on someone who's in their 20s 
because it takes them a while to draw because they have to, you know, pay bills and eat and, and have a job they probably don't like. But they like doing art. But they're not on the same level as you. And it's really, really, really bad. <laughs> it's really bad to where there are many people who don't share their stuff online. They don't share it because they don't feel worthy enough. Because let's be honest, I get a little envious. And I know you are too. Do not, do not you listening right now trying to say you're the bigger person because you're not. I've talked about this with my friends. I am envious that I see some kids in middle school who have giant followings because their artwork is amazing because they were able to nurture and work towards it and grow it. And I'm sitting here working as hard as I do as an adult being like, man, <laughs> wish I had those opportunities because I do, but I don't let it ruin my day. And we all do that. But the problem is it doesn't help when we have the people who in a skill level are better than us talk down to us, you know, and they act like, oh, you didn't have that. Ugh, that's so sad. It was. But when you're talking about it in such a way, it's really insulting and degrading and rude, you know, and it comes off as arrogant, especially when there's so many people out there who are young and starting off and being able to support themselves with their art. That is great. But you need to not judge other people that can't. And I, it's just, I'm seeing it more and more and I don't think it's going away. And I know the ageism is going everywhere. It's not just in the art community. I see it in the writing community. I see it in the gaming community. It's, it's pretty rampant. But since this is the part that I'm most comfortable talking about and seeing, I just felt like I should do it. So there's my rant. There's my ramble. Let me know what your thoughts and opinions down below. I really love reading people's thoughts on it. And yeah, thank you as always to my Patreon patrons. I love you guys so, 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 so much. And as always, I will. See you next time. Bye-bye.